all for coming tonight. We look forward to this service, to look forward to what God has for us. We ask that he would just settle down in this service, use it to help us get a boost to make it through the rest of this week by his grace, for his glory. Let's all stand as we open with prayer. I ask um, Brother Boyd Day, would you open the service in prayer? We thank you again, Lord, for this opportunity to come in my house. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings you bestow upon us. And we ask, Lord, that you would come meet with us tonight. Be with every song that's sung. Be with the speaker tonight. That this service may be used for thy glory. We pray what you do will praise thee in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all worship together and stay standing as Brother Zeb Brock comes to lead us in the singing. Take your course book, if you will, and turn to Song 177. Let's start with this Song 177 in the course book. Let's just praise the Lord. seated. I hope that's what you've come with tonight, wanting to praise the Lord. Maybe you have a testimony or song you'd like to sing, you can think about while uh, we sing this song number nine in the course book, Bigger Than Any Mountain, song number nine.
thankful. Whatever we're facing, we can turn to him who's bigger than it all. Maybe somebody has a song or a testimony you'd like to share tonight. Oh, that was the story. Well, that maybe broke the ice. Anybody have a testimony <laughs> or, a, or a song tonight? Well, I want to thank the Lord for his faithfulness. And so it's great today, every day that he's faithful to me. And <coughs> Amen. Amen. Determination. Let's try Song 111 while you're thinking about it. I want to see my mountain. Song 111 in the course book yet. him tonight. He's a merciful God and a long-suffering God. The more I think of his attributes, the more it humbles me before God to think of who he is yeah. and uh, how he could love. You know, the songwriter said how he could love a sinner such as I. I do a lot of meditating on that, how he can love us and be long-suffering with us and patient with us. It causes me to love him more tonight. And I love him tonight. I'm glad he saves and sanctifies, truly satisfies. That's his name forever. God of the universe cares about us. Tonight, and I'm so grateful that he's answered at least three prayers of mine this week. Amen. Answers to prayer. Uh, when we were here with the choir the other night, Brother Gertie mentioned something about there's some students that uh, <coughs> need miracles in their life. And uh, I was one of those students, and I uh, had a lot I had to pay on my school bill. Didn't know how I was going to pay. And uh, I was doing a lot of praying. I had a lot of friends and family praying. And uh, I got a phone call today, and they said, Gordon, your school bill is at zero. And I just praise the Lord for that. And uh, just thank him for what he has been doing, how he's helped me through school and my career. Yeah, yeah. Burden lifted for a college student. Amen. Anybody else? Amen. Amen. Saving power. Bigger than our sins. Anybody else? Let's try Song 73. He's the one still in the course book. Song 73.
call him our friend tonight. We're going to have a personal relationship with him. Anybody else with a testimony or song tonight? Thank you for uh, reaching down and rescuing me, a sinner like I was. I praise his name. Praise God. Oh, Lord, tonight I'm thankful for the strength to stand, and it's a joy to uh, be a be a servant of God's tonight, and I thank him for answers to prayer and uh, how he's been speaking to me and uh, that he cares about me. And sometimes um, you just need reminded of that. I thank God for reminding me of that today. Amen. Praise God. All right, let's finish with song 34 then. God can do anything. Song 34, anything but fail. need to mind God tonight and give him praise. He inhabits the praise of his people. I'm just going to stand tonight and give God praise. I'm so thankful that he saved me, he sanctified me, and I'm determined to have to make it through. Amen. Good. Amen. I so appreciate the love of Jesus. I'm so glad that he loves me tonight. I'm very aware of his love and his care, and I enjoy walking with him. I want to love him back just as much as I possibly can and feel his presence with me continually. I just appreciate being saved and the Holy Spirit dwelling within. I mean, the Holy Spirit means so much to me. He's so faithful to check me and to help me and to guide me and to uh, sustain me. Um, and it's just wonderful the way God planned for redemption and for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. I just. Appreciate the way he walks with me. Amen. Good. He'll be next. Amen. Good. Who's next? He makes all things possible. He's a friend of mine. Amen. That's good. Second. Baptismal service that we had Sunday morning. It was just beautiful to see people give their testimonies and then go through the baptism part of it. I've just been reveling in that all week. It was such a blessing to me. Yes. And so much of a blessing to hear people testify what their German is, that the baptism is going to show what they really intend to do, sure. which is to serve God, yes. which each one said they wanted to do. I love him. I remember so well the time I was baptized and how much it meant to me at the time. It may have meant more to my parents and the others on the shore. And I don't know. But I don't know how it could have meant, meant any more to anyone else than it did to me. I wanted to show that I was going to serve God and that he had changed my life and I wanted to be all he'd have me to be. Amen. My testimony then was I want to be all he wants me to be and it's still my testimony tonight. Amen. Let's go. Amen. Praise his name. Anyone else need to praise God tonight? This is what we're here for. You know, the Lord this evening, I'm glad that he answers prayer. I remember at the beginning of the semester I was facing some big challenges praying about it. The Lord gave me the words for that song we just sang. He can move the mountain. He can cast the big hindrances out of the way. And he's done that. I praise him for his goodness to me. And I just want to serve him. Amen. Good. Praise God. I want to thank the Lord for his goodness and dreams and uh, the physical challenges and he's helped me with them. I haven't understood to them. But uh, I know I need to 
careful my diet and uh, try to obey the Lord that way. But he's been good. And I want to give him all the praise. He's helped me spiritually. And I want to give him the glory and praise. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord for his faithfulness. He's been very good to me. I like the words of that song. He's a friend of mine. I'm glad that's a reality in my life. I love him, and I want to see him in heaven someday. Amen. It's good. I was visiting Charlie Coons today in the hospital and uh, said, how you doing? Of course, he, he's, he's sort of hard of hearing, to say the least, and so you have to take off the mask and yell. Um, so I was doing that. I visited the entire second floor in that one visit. <laughs> but uh, I said, Charlie, how you doing? And he's, he's got so much pain that he's living in with what he's dealing with. But you know what he told me? He said, I'm looking out the window and I'm seeing all the cars go by, and I wonder if those people know Jesus. And I thought, wow. Here's a guy who's facing incredible things physically. It's just, his strength is just almost gone, and he's sitting in the hospital. He said, it could be worse for me. It could be so much worse, but I wonder all those people out in that traffic. Wow. And when she said about winning people to Jesus, that it just made me think that that's a passion for souls that never has to, until our dying breath, until we're no longer here, can have that 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 passion and do something about it and share our faith. That was, it, it spoke to me today as I visited him. Wow. Give me that, Lord. Give me that. Amen. Anyone else need to praise God? Chorus number 68. need to mind God tonight. Oh, brother, I want to give the Lord praise. I was listening to a song today and it just dawned on me. I remember uh, learning in, in school about, uh, about these men who, who invested and uh, really spent fortunes in, in search of the, the fountain of youth, you know, the, the fountain of life. And um, just, it just dawned on me so sweetly, you know, just um, Jesus Christ was searching for them and he's searching for us. And Christ is the fountain of life. And um, 
what a blessing he's been to me just uh, for, for forgiving uh, my sins and sanctifying my heart and just to go through life and just to, to, just to revel in the, the blessings that we have and that, that clear communication with the Savior who knows us for who we are, who knows the path that we're walking, and he knows the plan that he's laid out for us, that we'll follow his eye and follow his, his desire. It's my desire to go all the way through with him. It's my desire to be a witness for Christ. I want to be everything that I can be for him. Amen. Praise his name. God knows what we need, doesn't he? Yes, he's yeah. there for us. Anthony. I've been studying in uh, Second Peter in the last two weeks. And, uh, the, <coughs> the first and second Peter chapter one, it talks about God giving us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of Jesus. And that is so powerful, his divine power. He gives us that. And I'm so thankful that I have that in my life. And I want to continue to love and serve him in Live a godly life with his power in my life. Amen. Amen. It's good. We do a procedure today. He's a wonderful savior to me. Amen. Good. You have to answer the prayer I've been praying about for some time. But um, I was talking to someone that was pretty down the dumps uh, before church. And I don't have all the answers, but I can point them to Jesus. And I'm so glad I can. And I'm so glad that Jesus is there for me when I meet him. And he's been by my side. He's walked with me. And he encourages me. And I just want to keep faithful and true to him. Let's uh, take the course book again, if you can. 198. Maybe we won't sing all of these verses. Of course, about the time I say that, we normally do. Let's start with verse 1 and see how it goes. One of his own is all I want to be. Where he may lead, I'll follow on. For this I know, whatever comes to me, I'll always be one of his own. Verse 1 says, I may not know what lies ahead for me. And honestly, if we, as we think about life, I think we're grateful for that. We fear the unknown. I, I talk about the sin-stained window of time. Now we see through this, this dark, sort of foggy glass. We have, he's told us so much, and yet there's so much we don't know. But honestly, I'm convinced that's better. I'm convinced that's better. If we have to know everything, if we have to figure it all out, as so many of us like to do I don't know how to express it I just I think there is a beauty in surrendering what we don't know putting it in the mystery bag and leaving it with God and just learning to trust him because it we don't know what's coming and I'm thankful for that but whatever lies ahead this I know I'm not alone. Amen? Let's stand together for sing number 198.
continue to play. We're going to gather around the altar tonight, bringing our burdens and our needs. I know you have needs on your heart. I invite you to come. Let's kneel together. If you aren't physically able, we understand that. Gather in the front pews or remain where you are. But let's gather in. Let's have a good season of prayer. We are remembering Brother Coons tonight, and he'll be transferred to Riverwoods tomorrow. Remembering Jeannie Stanton. She's home from the hospital. We're thankful for that, uh, but still continues to need a touch. Remembering Mary Basom, who's home, continues to need our prayer. Tina Norman. Um, and we're remembering in a special way uh, Pam Devinney tonight. Her brother passed away unexpectedly today. So we're remembering the David Devinney family, that God would be with them and comfort their hearts as we know that he is able to do. We're remembering our many online listeners, so many requests coming in. And we know those of you that are watching uh, tonight, you've got needs and you've got burdens and we want to bring them uh, before the Lord. Remembering Sandra Graybill, a friend of ours, pastor's wife out in Salem, Ohio, uh, facing chemo treatments for cancer, praying that God would uh, be with her in a special way. And uh, then we remember the spiritual needs. Most of all, God knows. You, he knows who you're praying for, and I just encourage you, don't give up on them. Uh, the devil wants you to give up. He wants to say there's no point. It'll never happen. Look at this one. It didn't happen in their life. Let's just hold on in prayer, and let's live our lives consistently. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we are grateful to be in your house with your people tonight. I pray that you would continue to bless. We've enjoyed the testimonies. We've enjoyed the singing. We're thankful for the sense of your presence here tonight, but we come before you as a needy people. You see each need that we have. You see each burden we're bearing. You see the busyness of the schedule that's going to begin here in the summer. I think of the school year wrapping up, Penview closing out, other schools being done. We pray that you would help in every graduation, every ceremony. Be with our students. We love them so much and we appreciate them and we're grateful to have them here while they're here. But as they go home for the summer, as they go on PR tour, whatever they're doing, I pray that you would keep them close to the cross. May they know you. May the enemy not get a foothold in their life, but may they somehow just uh, stay close to you, oh God. Put a hedge of protection about them. We pray for the, pray for the school groups that will be traveling. Would you would you give them your anointing and help? And we pray for many, many students. Lord, the, the fields are widened to harvest. Lord, we need preachers and teachers and, and, uh, and, and musicians and Sunday school teachers. And the list goes on and on. Church after church after church is crying out for help and, and needs servants to be called into your kingdom. Maybe even tonight there's someone watching online or someone here who's been debating whether they're going to go to college, whether they're going to do this thing. Lord, I pray that you give them the courage to, to commit to training, to commit to serving you, oh God. Lord, we need a culture of, of, of people going out and recognizing the need, oh God. We pray that you would supply the need for each of the churches, oh God. Be with Pastor Brother Martin and, and, and Brother Fuller as they're leading the conference and the general board. Give them wisdom and anointing. Brother Durkee as he's leading the school, the team there, and all of our staff and faculty members who are here. Uh, I pray that you would give them anointing and help through the summer. Lord, I pray that you would be with our church Church. Would you give us strength? Would you give us results for the labors? We thank you for the people who were baptized on Sunday, but there's so many more. We'd love to have baptism service every week because so many people are getting saved. Lord, we need that in our church, and I pray that you would come into this community. You see the drug addiction. You see the abuse. You see all of the crime and the things that in this little community are happening, and it seems so good, and it seems so beautiful. It is. The community is, and the scenery is gorgeous, but Lord, Lord, we know that in these hollers and hills and in these little towns, sin has a hold. Oh God, would you set a fire here on the corner of Covered Bridge and Creek Roads? Help us to burn so brightly for you that, that they know there's a place where they can come and be changed and have their lives transformed only by the power and the glory of God. We pray for every physical need tonight. We pray that you would be with each one who's struggling, facing surgery, going through treatments and tests. Oh God, we don't know what that's like. We don't know what that feels like, but so so many here do. They've been there. They've gotten that news. They've endured those treatments. They've done those things. And oh God, you know how the, the enemy can move in like a flood and he can try to try to discourage and choke out the spiritual growth. And when the physical is low and when there's discouragement, he moves in. I pray that you would keep him far from our people. Put a hedge about them. I pray that your spirit would rest on them. Help them to walk in the light. Help them to obey you. Help them to seek you, oh God. I pray that you would give them help in each of their lives. We continue 
continue to remember uh, the Davini family tonight. Would you be with them in a special way? Other families that are grieving, oh God, we know how it hurts. We felt that pain and that loss, and it's so real, and it just hurts. But oh God, we know that you've been faithful. We know that you've helped, and I pray that you would continue to do that for each one. Lord, as we set out through the rest of this week, may we bring glory and honor to your name. We're trusting in you and believing in you, thankful that you hear and answer prayer. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and ask these things. Amen. Amen. Praise his name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. What a privilege to pray, to come straight into the Holy of Holies, invited. He made the way possible that we can come and, and seek his face, praise his name. In just a moment, we're going to ask the ushers to receive the evening offering. This is a benevolence offering. Thank you so much for your giving. We appreciate the work of the Benevolence Committee and what they do kind of behind the scenes, and that's intentional, but we appreciate your giving to it, and uh, thank you so much for that tonight. want to announce that um, we will be having a meal uh, on Pastor Matt Day, as we've been calling it, May 29th. The noon meal will be a shared meal um, in the Bates Center, and uh, we're just announcing that for the first time tonight, but we do need to know know if you're coming. And uh, so on the welcome desk, there is a sign-up sheet. Um, you can text uh, Anita Malloyd uh, or put your name on that sign-up sheet. We'd sure appreciate that. And uh, it'll be a very special time, a very special day. And uh, so please keep that in mind, that meal on May the 29th. Of course, we've got graduations coming up, and then we head straight into all kinds of things, youth camp, vacation Bible school, uh, installation services here, um, and right on down through the summer. And let's do our best to support these events. We do need volunteers for Vacation Bible School, so if you're willing to help in any way, there's also a sign-up sheet there. Please take advantage of that, and uh, we, can, we can plug you into the Vacation Bible School, and we sure would appreciate your help and uh, pulling together. It takes a great team to do that, and you always do so well. Amen. Brother Darren Fisher, would you ask God's blessing on this offering? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity we have to be in your house, to give back to your ministry. I pray, Lord, that you bless this offering, bless those that can give, those that can't. Uh, may you multiply it to see your, your work go forward, to reach out to the community, reach out to those that are lost, showing them the love of Jesus. And I pray, Lord, that you would uh, bless this offering and use it for your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for your giving tonight. Thank you for the beautiful offertory. I don't know about you guys, but I've sensed a theme tonight that God has come to meet our needs. He, I, he has been just so near. I've sensed his presence, and I don't know the burdens you came here with, but we don't have to carry him with us. Let's just lay them all down. We had a wonderful season of prayer around the altar. Let's just lay our burdens down before God and walk away with the calm assurance that he's taking care of it. And he's taking care of us. That song said, there's not a friend like Jesus. And that was in a bunch of the testimonies tonight of how good of a friend Jesus is. Well, at this time, Jonathan Klein and the Canfield sisters are coming to sing. After which, Brother Schaefer will be bringing the devotional. Let's just keep our hearts, our minds open to what God would have and obey his every command. Let's be blessed as they sing.
In the harvest field a ripe end, there's a work for all to do. Hark the voice of God is calling to the harvest calling you. Little is much when God is in it, labor not for wealth or fame. There's a crown and you can win it if you go in Jesus' name. Does the place you call to labor seem so small and little known? It is great if God is in it, and He'll not forget His own. Little is much when God is in it. Thank you so much for that song and that reminder. Sometimes we need to hear that. Well, I want you to do two things. I want you to turn to Psalms 18.2 in your Bible, if you have it, or your phone, and then uh, get out your Sing to the Lord hymnal. We're not going to sing it quite yet. Uh, and turn to number 445. 445 in your hymnal and Psalms 18.2 um, in your Bible. I'll give you a second to turn there, mainly because I'm not there yet either. I was looking at this song as I was thinking about uh, the devotional. This just kept rolling through my mind, and so I just, I just want you to take a look at this song and this verse with me. Psalms 18.2 says, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. This song, Rock of Ages, is one that has we've sung for, for several hundred years now, and it's meaningful. Um, the legend says, and I don't know if it's true or not, the legend says that uh, Augustus Top Lady wrote the hymn during a stormy incident in England while traveling along the gorge in Burrington Combe. He was caught in a fierce storm and took shelter in a gap in the gorge where he wrote the original lyrics. Now, some disagree on whether the event actually occurred. Nevertheless, the rock is now marked with a plaque that reads, Rock of Ages. This rock derives its name from this well-known hymn, which is written. As I look at these verses uh, of the song, I notice three things, and I want to share them with you. First of all, is that the storm is a sure thing. The storm is a sure thing. Verse 1 says, Rock of ages, cleft for me, 
Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy wounded side which flowed be of sin the double cure. Save from wrath and make me pure. Those words, these words, assume the storm is going to happen. Now, some people think that Christians are insulated in this little bubble their entire lives. You ever see those bubbles that people run across a field in? It's like a game you get in, looks like a giant gerbil bubble, and you run down a hill. That looks really fun, actually. I've never done it. But I think that's how some people think the Christian is. You get inside this bubble and you go through life and, boy, you just kind of bounce off of everything. And if you go across water, you float. You, it's just all good. Well, that's not true. Would you agree? It's not. And there are multiple reasons that it's not true, but maybe one of them is this. If Think about this. If God provided automatic and full, unrestrained, absolute protection to Christians, talking about physically, from accident, every way, everyone would want to be a Christian, but for the wrong reason. Think about that. If God provided absolute, unrestricted, absolute protection, physically, from accidents, from illness, everyone... I mean, you, would, you could cancel your health insurance. You could cancel your car insurance. Well, you can't do that. That's not legal. Uh, you know what I'm saying? But it would be for the wrong reasons. People would be using, say, well, I'm a Christian. I believe in God as an insurance policy. It would be like the individuals that Christ said followed him only because of the loaves and the fishes. You're coming because I'm giving you food. It's not what I'm teaching Everyone would serve Christ and love Christ only for the preservation of self and wealth. And being a Christian would be little more than an insurance policy. It would not be a relationship with Christ. Now, I want to look at the nature of the storm as is described in this hymn. It's the storm of sin. It says, let the water and the blood from thy wounded side which flowed be of sin the double cure, save from wrath, and make me pure. We get so focused on the physical in this life that we forget that all of the negative things in our world and in our lives ultimately can be traced back to being the result of sin. Adam and Eve's sin brought the curse. And so every disease, death itself, all of the things that we deal with may not be a direct result of someone sinning. I'm not saying if you get hurt or you get a disease, you have sinned. I'm not saying that. But I am saying that the disease itself, the concept of death, is a result of sin. And so when we think about the storms that we live in, this scripture, or this, not scripture, this song talks about hiding ourselves. It talks about the nature of it is I must have a double cure. I must be saved from wrath, and I must be made pure. You and I live in a sin-cursed world, and therefore, even if we are not living in sin, in some way, we will always feel its effects. The storm is sure. It is going to happen, and I think that knowing that is key. Some people run around their entire lives saying, why me? Why me? Why are all these things happening to me? Have you ever felt that way? I have. But I think the better thing to do is to ask this, why not me? Why not me? Who am I to think that I should escape what so many others have endured? The storm is a sure thing. The second thing we notice is that this rock, this stone, is superior. He's the rock of righteousness. Could my tears forever flow? In other words, could I cry forever and stop the sin storm in our world? Could my zeal no longer know? Could it never, ever be diminished in any way? Could my zeal be absolutely perfect? And if it were, I could not stop the sin storm that we feel all around us. These for sin could not atone. Thou must save, and thou alone. 
So here's the question you may have. If the Christian still feels the effects of the storm, then what does the Rock of Ages do? Well, think back to the legend that we told you at the beginning of how we believe this song was written. When he was in that place in the rock, he could no doubt still see the storm. Maybe he could hear the thunder and see the lightning, and no doubt there was wind that whipped through that cleft, and sometimes maybe even driving rain. But that storm could not move him or destroy him because he was safe in the rock. You may live in a safe and secure house, but if there's a thunderstorm outside, you know it. Lights are blinking and wind is whipping, rain is driving. Some of you are very scared of storms. You could be as snug as a bug in a rug in your brick house. And if there's a storm outside, you're crying like a baby. (laughs) Because you feel the emotional effects of that storm on the outside of your home. You're safe, but you're still feeling it. And I think that may be at least a little bit of a picture of what it means for the Christian to hide in the cleft of the rock. Jesus Christ saves us from wrath. He makes us pure. We are hiding in the cleft of the rock, but... Oh, we still feel the effects of the sin storm, which will always be here in this world. We're truly safe because that sin storm is no longer tearing us up on the inside. That's what the rock of ages has done. He's the righteous rock and he has saved us. He's sanctified us. He's made us right. There's no longer a storm on the inside, but we feel the effects of life on the outside. The third thing I notice about this is that safe arrival is certain. While I draw this fleeting breath, when my eyes shall close in death, when I rise to worlds unknown and behold thee on thy throne, rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. Death is not something that we want to think about, but we must. It comes to all of us. And I'm glad that verse 3 is here in this song because it reinforces the idea that the Christian is not immune to the general effects of sin in our world. Sin brought death into the world and we must all die. And for the most ready person here tonight, that's still scary because ultimately our death is the ultimate earthly unknown. But the songwriter says, while that's happening to me, While I draw my fleeting breath, when my eyes shall close in death, when I rise to worlds unknown, what's it say? Rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. Friend, because of the rock, safe arrival is certain. God may not heal your cancer. He may not stop the accident. He may not give you 90 or 100 trouble-free years, but what he will do is this, with the double cure, save you from wrath and make you pure, and then you are in the cleft of the rock, maybe feeling the effects of the storm outside, but not living with the storm inside of you. I'd like if we could. We've sung a lot of songs tonight. But we've got a few minutes. Would you turn with me to number, well, you've already turned to 445. Let's sing it in closing. Rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee.
heaven, we are grateful to be able to hide ourselves in you. We're thankful that you can calm and change the sin storm in our heart and take care of that battle. But Lord, as a, as a believer hiding in the rock, we feel the wind and rain occasionally, and we sometimes wonder how's this going to turn out. But Lord, we're grateful that you will protect us, and you will keep us, and you will be with us. Be with that one tonight who's discouraged, who's maybe afraid, who's dealing with things in their life. Help them to feel you near uh, in the storm. May you give them victory. I pray that you would go with us as we are dismissed from here. I pray that you would give us traveling mercies and bring us back together on Sunday. Be with every Sunday school teacher, every musician, every uh, person who's going to have a part, every person who's going to be in attendance. Oh God, we pray that the services will be marked by your presence. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and all God's people said, amen. Thank you so much for coming tonight. God bless you. You are dismissed.